，巴以在多方斡旋下达成停火。The occupation is violent. There is loss of life every day among the Palestinian people, affecting primarily women and children. 推动中东和平进程，中国将如何发挥大国角色？ China has been very clear, and President Xi has been very clear on the right of the Palestinian people to independence, to statehood, and it is very consistent in its position. 风云对话专访巴勒斯坦常驻联合国副观察员费达·阿卜杜勒哈迪·纳塞尔。进入二零二三年以来，巴以地区紧张局势加剧。以色列军队在约旦河西岸和耶路撒冷多个地区与巴勒斯坦人发生冲突，并造成伤亡。耶路撒冷也发生多起针对以色列人的枪击事件。随后，巴勒斯坦宣布停止与以方安全协调，以色列也宣布一系列针对巴勒斯坦人的措施。在埃及、卡塔尔和联合国官员的斡旋下，双方已同意于五月三日凌晨停火。但是停火协议能否持续，仍存在不确定性。本期风云对话，此同连线身在美国纽约的巴勒斯坦常驻联合国副观察员费达·阿卜杜勒哈迪，他就当前局势为大家进行了解析。Hello, Ambassador Feda Abdel Hadi. It's great to have you on Talk with World Leaders. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here with you this morning. Thank you. Now, at the beginning of this year, we've seen continued escalation of tensions in the region.、Um, some people even say, "Is Gaza waiting for war every moment?" Please tell us what is the real situation there. Nancy, the situation is a very difficult situation in Palestine, and the impending war that. Others are continuously referring to is actually happening as we speak. The occupation itself is an by Israel of the Palestinian land and the Palestinian people is an ongoing war and an ongoing escalation against the Palestinian people. The occupation is violence every day. There is loss of life every day among the Palestinian people, affecting primarily women and children. Who are vulnerable to the loss of their homes, to intimidation and violence by the Israeli army, to the forced displacement from their land. The situation at the moment is more explosive than it has been in years because an Israeli government has come to power that is insistent on pursuing a policy of escalation against the Palestinian people. A policy whereby all of the measures and practices that Israel has been carrying out for years, that they are going to pursue these policies in such an escalatory manner as to be determinative, and determinative in terms of the objective of annexation of the Palestinian land. August 12th. 以色列政府批准把约旦河西岸九个非法犹太人定居点合法化，并宣布在原有定居点大规模新建住宅。这也是自去年十二月内塔尼亚胡领导的新一届以色列政府上台以来，首次批准将非法定居点合法化。以色列总理办公室发表声明称，将组建一个规划委员会，以批准在犹太人定居点新建更多住宅。按照以色列财政部长斯莫特里赫的说法，新建住宅将达到一万套。一直以来，犹太人定居点问题是巴以和谈的主要障碍之一。以色列在1967年第三次中东战争中占领约旦河西岸和东耶路撒冷，此后开始在这些地区新建犹太人定居点。时至今日。约有五十多万犹太人生活在东耶路撒冷和约旦河西岸的一百四十余个定居点中，这被巴勒斯坦人认为是对本国领土的侵占。Now, Ambassador, as you mentioned,、uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's government is dominated by far-right politicians who have、uh, openly opposed Palestinian independence. So, what do you think、um, the Israeli's new government's outlook? Is for the two-state solution. 
The Israeli government does not believe in the two-state solution. It is not committed to the two-state solution. It acts in a way that is absolutely contradictory to the two-state solution. And the current government of Benjamin Netanyahu is one that does not even pay lip service to the two-state solution as prior governments did. They are openly hostile to the two-state solution. And this is in both word and deed. What they are saying now is that there is no reference to ending the occupation. And there is reference only to expanding settlements, to giving more entitlements to the settlers that have been illegally transferred uh, to occupied Palestine. We have a situation where, despite a peace process based on the two-state solution in Madrid in 1991, and again, the Oslo peace process in 1993, which will mark 30 years this September. In that period of time, in those 30 years, Israel has done everything to undermine the two-state solution. And whereas in 1993, for example, we had 140,000 Israeli Jewish settlers in occupied Palestine, we now have nearly 800,000 Israeli Jewish settlers in occupied Palestine, including in East Jerusalem. And this current Israeli government only says that it will reinforce that colonial presence in occupied Palestine. It has no intention to end it. And I think that this has to be borne in mind by the international community in terms of the calls for realization of the two-state solution. There is one party blocking that realization and not just blocking it, but destroying it. We've seen in January the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, went on a, a Middle East trip. How do you think this visit has had an impact on the region, or has it not done what it's supposed to be doing? Secretary Blinken's visit to the region was a reminder of not only how volatile the situation is, but how important it is to justly resolve the Palestine question, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict for stability and peace in the region and also beyond the region. And it came at a time when many have said that the Palestine question has been neglected by the international community and including by the United States in terms of uh, prioritization on its global agenda. However, Secretary Blinken's visit has not been effective in uh, resolving the core issues at hand. There may have been a temporary uh, de-escalation, but no sooner had he left the region, the Israeli government resumed their policies and did not even respect any of the commitments that they gave to the U.S. Secretary of State. Although the U.S. Special Envoy has uh, returned to the region uh, on behalf of Secretary Blinken, it remains to be seen whether this Israeli government will be responsive to those entreaties. 今年早前, 先后会见以色列总理内塔尼亚胡和巴勒斯坦总统阿巴斯。布林肯在与内塔尼亚胡见面后呼吁，采取紧急措施恢复平静，但他承认目前很困难。巴勒斯坦总统阿巴斯在会
the Israeli military was not only escalating its raids into Palestinian areas, but in which the casualties have been mounting. Since 2023 began, we have more than 80 Palestinians, civilians that have been killed, and among them, at least 17 children. Which and is so most the decision serious by, for many it's, years. It's a very serious situation indeed. And these people, again, are being killed in their homes, in the streets, children uh, who are um, minors who should be protected are being uh, assaulted, attacked by soldiers and by armed m militias of settlers. The Palestinian Authority had to be responsive as well to its people. Its people who were saying this security coordination with Israel is not uh, protecting the Palestinian people. It's not of benefit to the Palestinian people and how come our government is upholding agreements while Israel does not. And so the appeals for resuming security coordination have not yet uh, been fulfilled because Israel has not fulfilled its own commitments. So the fact um, that Palestinian Authority severed ties with uh, security ties with Israel, this is actually a call from the Palestinian people. It is, it is, and it comes in conjunction with the call for protection. It cannot be that the Palestinian Authority uh, continues security coordination with Israel, but Israel continues to violate the security of the Palestinian people. Given what's been said uh, with the relationship between the US and Israel, do you think the Security Council, uh, do you think the UN, is capable of promoting the settlement of Israeli-Palestinian conflict? I think that that would only be possible if, if the dynamics in the Security Council change. If the United States allows the Security Council to play uh, it, its charter role, to uphold its charter duties for the maintenance of international peace and security when it comes to the question of Palestine, uh, the longest issue on the agenda of the United Nations since the inception of the organization. Um, as long as Israel is treated differently as a state above the law by the United States, we will not be able to have an effective role for the United Nations, and it will continue to be a primarily humanitarian uh, a crisis management role rather than a, a role that promotes a peaceful solution, brings an end to the occupation, and ensures that the Palestinian people attain the rights that they have been deprived of for over 75 years.巴以之间两国方案的起源还要从《贝尔福宣言》说起。一九一七年，英国政府发表了赞同和认可犹太人在巴勒斯坦建立一个犹太人之家的《贝尔福宣言》。最初，英国希望在巴勒斯坦地区建立一个融合犹太人与阿拉伯人的统一国家，但阿犹人民冲突不断，该计划最终搁浅。一九四七年，英国宣布了从巴勒斯坦撤出的愿望。此时的巴勒斯坦地区已有约六十万犹太移民。同年，在英美等国的主导下，联合国通过了幺八幺号决议，规定在一九四八年结束英国的委任统治后，将巴勒斯坦地区分为两个国家，犹太人和阿拉伯人分别拥有百分之五十五和百分之四十五的土地，而耶路撒冷被置于联合国的管理之下。这一方案被阿拉伯国家联盟断然拒绝。巴勒斯坦地区阿拉伯人与犹太人随即爆发冲突，自此中东战争数次打响。
the head of the UN, Antonio Guterres, said uh, at a meeting of the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People in February that time is really running short concerning the Israel and Palestine issue, saying the UN is committed to supporting Palestinians and Israelis to resolve this conflict. What role do you think the United Nations plays in the region or should play in the region? Well, we have always affirmed that the United Nations has a permanent responsibility until a just solution for the Palestine question. And we base that, uh, that affirmation on the UN role in the partition of historic Palestine in 1947 uh, with its adoption of Resolution 181 in the General Assembly. When it undertook to partition Palestine and when the State of Israel was established, the Palestinian people endured what we call the Nakba, the catastrophe, where the overwhelming majority of Palestinians were expelled from their homeland and fled, where over 400 Palestinian villages uh, and towns and cities were destroyed, uh, and where, uh, as a result of which, the majority of the Palestinian people remain refugees, living outside of their homeland. Over 5.8 million of those refugees still registered with the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees. And so the United Nations has both a humanitarian role in caring for the Palestine refugees and ensuring their sustenance and their well-being and development as the UN has been doing through UNRWA, but it also has a role to play in terms of a political solution. And that is why we have been uh, constantly engaged with the UN Security Council and the UN General Assembly and as well with other organs of the United Nations, including the International Court of Justice, seeking the fulfillment of the rights of our people, seeking a just solution to the Palestine question, seeking the implementation of the countless resolutions adopted by the United Nations. And so, whereas the UN is playing its humanitarian role to address this ongoing crisis, a Nakba of 75 years for the Palestinian people, it has not been able to promote that political solution. And it has not been able to ensure the legal accountability that is required in light of Israel's constant violations of international law, including international humanitarian law, and of the human rights of the Palestinian people. 今年是中国巴勒斯坦建交三十五周年，中国是最早支持巴勒斯坦民族抵抗运动并承认巴解和巴勒斯坦国的国家之一。中巴友谊源远流长，双方始终相互信任，彼此支持。二零二二年十二月
we uh, are very grateful for and immensely uh, value as a contribution towards a just solution. Uh, and we believe that its role is very important to play, again, both as a permanent member of the Security Council and as a member of the international family. Uh, could you tell us more about the concrete steps taken by other countries and other international organizations to improve the situation in the region? Well, the international community has been for, for decades, of course, involved in trying to alleviate uh, the, the crisis and the situation in occupied Palestine uh, through various peace initiatives, through humanitarian support, through support to the Palestinian government, uh, both multilaterally through the United Nations, but as well bilaterally. Um, and as I had mentioned earlier, of course, this includes China. China as a permanent member of the Security Council, China um, as a, a very close friend and strong supporter of Palestine. Uh, based on principle, President Xi has made various efforts uh, to support the Palestinian people at the United Nations, but equally in other global forums. Uh, we also have, of course, uh, regional organizations that have been very active in seeking peace and justice for Palestine. The League of Arab States, uh, among the OIC, as well as efforts in the African Union and in the European Union. Now, in September last year, Palestinian Authority President Mohammed Abbas delivered a speech at the UN General Assembly calling for Palestine to obtain an official seat in the UN. What preparations are you currently making uh, to accomplish that goal? And what are some of the obstacles and challenges for this to happen? President, uh, President Mahmoud Abbas submitted the application of Palestine for admission as a full member at the United Nations in 2011 and has continually made the appeal and as you noted, most recently in September, again, called for Palestine's full membership. And this call has been supported by many countries around the world from every region, uh, from Asia, Africa, Latin America, and of course, inclusive of China that believes we do have a right to be a full member of the United Nations. Um, so President what's the biggest Abbas challenge? The biggest challenge remains the veto that is wielded by the United States in the Security Council. We have not been able to overcome that. We have made our appeals uh, to the United States, including uh, in the, uh, the, the revival of this uh, call in, to 20, uh, in 2022 for Palestine's membership in the UN. And we have appealed to the United States not to veto, but we have not been able to overcome that. In, in the process of seeking full membership, however, because of the inability to uh, overcome the US veto in the Security Council, in 2012, we decided to go to the General Assembly. And that is where we uh, achieved observer state status uh, in the General Assembly with the support of the overwhelming majority of countries, 138 countries, including China. And at this time, uh, 140 countries around the world formally recognize the state of Palestine. And I would say that that is actually more than countries that have formal relations with Israel. And if Palestine becomes a member state of the United Nations, how do you think this is going to affect peace and stability in the Middle East? We think that, that, that Palestine's admission to membership in the United Nations would be an investment in the two-state solution. It would be an assertion of the two-state solution. When the United Nations decided to partition Palestine in 1947. It decided after, thereafter, after the independence of Israel, to admit Israel as a member state to the United Nations 
and yet it has left Palestine outside of mem UN membership. And if the United Nations is to be true to its own decisions and its own uh, legislation, it would be most consistent and most appropriate for it to admit Palestine. It is unfair to Palestine and to the Palestinian people to for a position to be that Palestine cannot be admitted until the conflict is resolved. So we are being deprived of our self-determination and independence in our homeland, being deprived of our human rights, and equally being deprived of our rightful place among the community of nations.